So, <clears throat> so, so what we have here is an Italian American crooner dressed like a Spanish bullfighter, <laughs> singing a song about an Argentine girl who lives in Havana. <laughs> How's that for a melting pot? No? <laughs> then, you know, the, after a few years, the rumba was sort of supplemented by the conga. And, you know, Desiree Nash is one of the people who have claimed to have introduced the conga. One of one, my favorite title of, of a conga is um, I came, or an English language conga, is I came, I saw, I conga. <laughs> Which can, could well be sort of the, the summary of the, of the, of the Cuban uh, rhythm, rhythm invasion in the United States. There's also one called One, Two, Three, Kick which was a translation of the Cuban conga, una, dos y tres, que paso más chévere, que paso más chévere, el de mi conga. After, after the conga, oh, thanks. after the conga you had the mambo. And who was the king of the mambo? And you know, some of you not long ago you know, uh, went to a very uh, 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 entertaining and instructive lecture on the mambo. The king of the mambo was Damaso Perez Prado. However, and, and actually the mambo, uh, unlike the rumba or the conga, arguably the, mango has a, the mambo has a birth date. Because even though there's a, there's, a, there's a kind of a historical background to the mambo, the mambo was essentially one man's bright idea, Damaso Perez Prado's bright idea. He couldn't get recorded in Cuba, he went to Mexico. The first mambo, called Que Rico el Mambo, was recorded in Mexico in March of 1949. Actually, March 30, 1949. So yesterday, the mambo turned 62. <laughs> More relevant to, 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 my, to my book are not mambos, but mamboids. Songs that sort of allude to the mambo, evoke the mambo without being mambos. Both mambos are, in fact, instrumental. So they don't let themselves to being latooned, to being turned into American. American songs, and there were very many, very many, very many of these. A big hit for, for Perry Como was one called Papa Los Mambo. Uh, there was one called Mambo Italiano, which was for a while banned from the radio because supposedly it it, um, it slurred Italians because it said the lyrics said, uh, uh, "You Calabresi do the mambo like a crazy," and that was considered <laughs> insulting. Uh, in Damn Yankees. There's a, there's, a, there's a mambo, you no? Know, which is who's got the pain when they do the mambo. But my favorite mamboids, my favorite mamboids are, are mamboid Christmas carols. Okay. For example, there was one in 1954 called I Saw Mommy Doing the Mambo with You Know Who. <laughs> there was another one called We Want to See Santa Do the Mambo. There was a Jingle Bells Mambo. There was a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Mambo. <laughs> but the Mambo's appeal was non-sectarian, so that you also had a Mambo Moishe. <laughs> you also had a Mambo Shevitz, <laughs> instead, of, instead of Manny Shevitz. And then Mickey Katz, who, um, uh, who one of his you know, uh, Jewish musicians used to play in the Catskills and so on, he recorded something called my Yiddish Mambo. <laughs> and this is about a Jewish Mambonik who, as the song says, is baking her challis for Noro Morales. <laughs> <laughs> Noro Morales was a Puerto Rican band leader in New York. And then I, I love the ending of the song. The, 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 the song ends, Ole, Ole, Oive. <laughs> <laughs> After the mambo came the cha-cha-cha. You know? And again, um, what's most interesting to me in this particular instance are what I call crypto, crypto cha-cha-chas, songs that you wouldn't think were cha-cha-chas, and a great deal of early American rock music. I'm talking about brill building music, you know? the kind of music that was being written by people like Bert Baccarat and, and Carol King and Neil Sedaka in the brill building, you know, late 50s, early 50s, were chachas, okay? For example, think of songs like Under the Boardwalk, Stay, Little Darling, Johnny Angel. All those songs are cha-cha. 
when I remember when I was when I was in parochial school, we used to have Sunday night dances that were sponsored by the CYO, and they would play songs American music, and you know the Cuban boys found out that we could do the cha cha to them, and so it was very easy to us to assimilate this music because we were cha cha to 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 um, to these songs. Uh, Neil Sedaka, in his high school yearbook, wrote that the three most important uh, influences in his life were Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, and Chacha. <laughs> and almost every song that Neil, Neil Sadaka ever wrote is a Chacha, you know, from, from Old Carol, Stairway to Heaven, Switch 16, and, and so on. Okay? Even some, some dances that were not officially called, that were called something else. There's a, a famous, famous to me, you know, famous to, to people my generation, called the mashed potato. You know? Mashed potato started a long time ago by Didi Sharp. What does it say? Mashed potato started a long time ago by a guy named Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe, a reference to the famous you know, hangout in Havana, so that the song itself is revealing its sort of, it's, it's sort of revealing its origins in Cuban music. And now, we're in the 50s, and so we get to I Love Lucy. And since I think time is running short, I'm not going to get in, into this very much, but um, it's, it's, you know, it's sobering to realize that the most important Hispanic in the history, the most influential Hispanic in the history of American culture is Ricky Ricardo. You know, you know several, generations, several generations of Americans learned about Cuba, learned how Cubans treat and mistreat their wives, learned how Cubans you know, lose their temper, then learned how hardworking Cubans are from watching Ricky Love Lucy. Shortly before he died, Desi Arnaz, uh, the character, the, the actor who played Out of Lucy was asked how he wanted to remember it. And he said, I want to remember it as the I in I Love Lucy. And, it, and you know, when, when one views this show from the Cuban perspective, as I do, you, 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 you sort of realize that the, the star of the show is not Lucy, it's Ricky. You know? So there's a chapter in here called Cuba and Apartment 3B about the extent to which Cuba shapes that, that show. And this, this particular episode is an episode called Be a Pal, where Lucy thinks that Ricky misses his happy childhood in Cuba, and then decides that what he has to do is, and Ricky's, Ricky's mother supposedly was a famous singer in Cuba, and so she decides that she's going to become Ricky's mother. And she turns that, you know, the living room, the living room in, in that show is this wonderfully malleable space, space. You know, it can be anything, right? And on this particular day, she decides to turn it into her idea of Cuba. Okay? And it's a very strange idea. You can see this, this you know, man with a serape. I think that's Ethel, actually, who's you know, dressed like a, like a Mexican. And then Ricky comes home from working and you know, tired and throws his, you know, throws his, you know, his uh, jacket and says you know, the immortal words, you know, Lucy, I'm home. Lucy comes out of the bedroom dressed like Carmen Miranda. <laughs> Singing Mamá Yo Quiero in Portuguese. <laughs> and Ricky has a wonderful, you know, she's trying to be Cuban, her idea of Cuban, right? And he says to her, Lucy, have you gone off your rocker? So she's trying to be Cuban. He replies with a quintessentially American expression. And then he says something very sweet, you know? He, she says to him, well, you know, I thought you, you missed your, your life in Cuba, and so I wanted to be reminded of it. And he says these words were sort of, almost like a slogan of many of our lives. Lucy, if I wanted things Cuban, I would have stayed in Havana. That's why I married you, because you're so different from everyone I've met before. 